I would like to start by thanking organizer for providing such a great opportunity for us to present our work and get to know other people and the interesting board. Okay, so this is approximating. That's why I mentioned instead of 17, I mentioned 16.9999 to indicate that we are in the approximation world. And to start my talk, uh, I would like to present a theorem by Lehtio uh, that my work is, uh, I should have said my work is a joint work with Prof. Goose here. Uh, he's in U University of Montreal and the problem was introduced by him to me and we started working on that for, for a couple of months. Okay, so the, the motivation for two of us was uh, this theorem of Lihtu, which mentioned that if you have two measurable function uh, on the interval zero and two pi, which can take value negative infinity or positive infinity, then there exists the holomorphic function on the unit disk in the complex plane that the radial limit of f at each point e to the i theta is equal to psi one theta plus i psi two theta. In other words, the, uh, the radial limit of a holomorphic function can be prescribed by two measurable functions. This problem later on was uh, generalized to the unit ball in CN in several complex variable and even more for shadow convex domain a star shape with respect to the origin and convex with some family of uh, polynomials. So that was the generalization to CN. However, our work is in RN and instead of working with a holomorphic function, we would like to work with analogous harmonic counterpart of this problem. And this is just a starting uh, point. Okay, so now let's go to the next slide and uh, talk about a little bit about the preliminaries, notations, and basic definitions that you may need uh, to know to follow my talk, okay? So we start with omega just to be a non-compact Riemannian manifold and we assume it's connected. F to be a closed subset of that. AF, uh, we use this notation to indicate the set of all continuous functions on the set F that are harmonic in the interior of F. And there are two definitions in the complex approximation theory that the first one is we called a set, a closed set F Mergurian set. If, if every function in AF can be uniformly approximated by functions harmonic on the entire space omega. And uh, not in, Contrary, but in other direction, we have the Carleman set. The Carleman set is dealing with the approximation that is being controlled by a function, which we call it error function, is still defined on the F. And we call a set this Carleman approximation. If, if it's a Carleman set, uh, if every function in AF uh, and every continuous error function, there is a harmonic function that the difference between the continuous function and the harmonic function can be controlled by epsilon on F. Uh, characterizing Carleman sets is not easy. Uh, uh, Muhammad, please. Usually we are doing the opposite things, right? So we have uh, functions on the boundary, for instance, uh, then the the Cauchy theorem says that uh, the function value inside can be determined by using the functions on the boundary, right? Mm -hmm. So you motivation, the previous, uh, the first page you show us, that says we are doing the opposite. We are trying to determine the uh, function value by inside information. Yes, exactly. exactly. That's like uh, solving an equation, you know? Yes, but the point is here, uh, you know, we use the proof contains the closed subset of the unit disk on this closed set, which is the radii. Then when we approach to the boundary, then our approximation gets closer and closer to the holomorphic function 
And that approximated function gets closer and closer to the measurable function on the boundary. As I mentioned, my work is not literally generalization of this theorem. This is just a motivation for us. I know, I think uh, this, uh, this uh, it's a very good uh, motiv uh, uh, motivation because so usually, for instance, the Euler equation is used to, to uh, describe uh, the movements of water, like uh, in the uh, ocean, in a river. Then we are trying to, but what we can absorb is the surface. So uh, the, the water surface, yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so if we know what's the behavior on the surface, then we are trying to know the behavior inside, like the, the currents of the ocean. Interesting, yeah. yes, yes, it's, it's, it's a good analogy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, thanks. Okay, so can I, can I continue? Sure, yeah. Okay, so characterizing Carleman set is not easy task. And so to, uh, I, I will give you just one, one theorem that characterizes uh, um, in some way Carleman set of a uh, Riemannian manifold. Uh, to understand the theorem, I have to present some definitions. So when I said bounded set in omega, remember omega was a Riemannian manifold, I mean relatively compact subset of that. What is the whole? So intuitively, it's just the whole as we see, but mathematically, it's just every component of the complement, which is also a bounded set. We use uh, the notation f hat to say that the union of f with is holes. So clearly, f hat is a closed subset with no holes. And uh, there is a long island condition first introduced by Paul Boucher. Uh, and we say that f family of subset of omega satisfy the long island condition if every bounded set, the union of all sets that intersect uh, uh, this bounded set uh, uh, should be bounded. So in other words, there, uh, in generally speaking, there is no long island in our set. And the omega star, as usual in mathematics, is uh, used to indicate the one point compactification. Here is the theorem of Bagbian-Gaucher, 1994. And it says that if F is a closed subset of non-compact Riemannian manifold, then the following are equivalent. F is a Mergelian set, so the uniform approximation is possible if and only if the three conditions are satisfied. The first condition is the three condition all together must be satisfied, not just one of them. Okay, so the omega minus f hat and omega minus f interior should be thin at the same points of f, and the holes of f must satisfy the long island conditions, and the one point compactification of Riemannian manifold minus the f bar should be locally connected. Okay, so moreover, because we are looking for the Carleman set, this is the interesting part of the theorem. It says that if the interior of f is empty, then F is a set of Carleman approximation. Okay, so I start making sense of a couple of things here. So the first one is the thinness, the concept of thinness in Rn is familiar to uh, people in uh, potential theory. I would like to recall it again uh, in, in case uh, uh, somebody don't know it. We call a subset of Rn is thin at the point Y. We have a set, we have a point. Uh, if, if either the point Y is not the limit point of Y, and if it's a limit point of Y, there must be a super harmonic U with the property that if I take the limit of U X, when X goes to the point Y within the set E, then the limit is strictly greater than U Y. That's the definition of thinness of a set at the point. And there is a lemma just that helps out to, to visualize the thinness. Uh, if we have a super harmonic function on a set U, then for every point Y in U, I have this equality on every super harmonic for every point I have this equality. So automatically this cannot or never happen. Okay, so this never happened. So this implies that every open set in Rn is non-thin in each point of itself. 
these are classical results, so none of them are, are new. Uh, so the second things that we need is the polar set, the definition of polar set, a set in Rn again is polar set. If there is a super harmonic function that has singularity exactly at those points uh, of uh, E and possibly in other points. So there must be an open set containing the O that inside the E and the superharmonic function is equal to positive infinity. Again, to visualize, uh, we can think of a line in R2 is not polar, however, line in Rn uh, for n greater than 2 are polar set. And polar sets, the relationship between polarity and thinness, we should say that the polar set is thin everywhere. And one more thing that helps us to imagine the polar sets uh, is if we remove a closed set, closed polar set from a connected set, the remaining thing is still connected. So they are not thick enough to uh, create non-connected uh, uh, sets. Okay. Um, um, I would like to talk about uh, the, the potential theory on the Riemannian manifold. And for that purpose, we need the concept of Brillot space. I don't want to get into the too much detail of the Brillot space, uh, just the very basic definition that, or the minimum definition that we can make is, uh, we start with the Riemannian manifold and we add a shift of harmonic functions. Uh, this is all we need to have the potential theory on Riemannian manifold, all Drusley problem, the thinness, polarity, those kind of things can be defined by adding this shift. And uh, there is a definition, if we have two Brillot space, we would like to see what would be the, the maps between them. If we have a continuous map between the Brillot space M and Brillot space N, we call it harmonic morphism. If for every open subset V of the image and every harmonic function on So, v, Muhammad. So basically, you wish you have uh, linear functions, right? Because on, I'm not talking about the map phi. So I'm saying on on you on the given domains you described, like the polar state, the Jordan state, Jordan domain. So you basically hope there is a harmonic harmonic function. But the basic uh, harmonic function is the linear functions, you see, ax plus b, mm -hmm. right? So uh, there, uh, uh, so I think is the hard part, hard point to construct the harmonic functions to try to find the harmonic functions. Uh, you know, for R1, you are right, uh, but for R uh, n, n greater than or equal to 2, and mm -hmm. then and, and characterizing the polar set, and, you know, and, uh, later on in my slides, uh, just two more uh, slides, I will talk about the R1. Okay. Okay, so just give me one second, and then I will, I will talk about the R1. Sure, yeah. Thank okay? you. Uh, so this is called the definitions of the harmonic morphism that, that literally just, just uh, do what we need to do and just maps uh, every, every harmonic function to harmonic function. And this is a technical definition. I cannot really talk about that much here, uh, but it's what we need, we call uh, a harmonic morphism is of type BL. If the same definition, instead of just every harmonic function, we, we talk about every locally bounded potential, then the composition uh, should be a potential on the inverse image. Okay, as, as a consequence of this potential theory on Riemannian manifold, I, I, I use this notation for the unit sphere in Rn. So if we have a M Riemannian manifold of dimension little m and N a sub manifold of dimension N, little n, then n is polar in n if and only if n is at most n minus two. This gives us a very good tool to detect some kind of polar sets. Uh, this is an if and only if, so based on the dimension. Okay, for example, 
Uh, a point in Riemannian manifold of dimension M is polar if and only if M is at least two. If we, we want to have a point to be polar, then M must be at least two. So consequently, there is no non-empty polar sets in R1 nor in S1. S1 is the uh, unit circle in the, uh, in the R2. Okay, so now uh, uh, possibly the last theorem we need for the preliminaries. And uh, this is the in, interesting theorem of Fuglidi that help us to go back and forth between the polar sets and the concept of the thinness between our n and our n minus one and our n minus zero and the unit sphere in the Rn. It says that, so if we consider these two, I call this vertical projection and this radial projection and writing formula for them is extremely easy. So these are the harmonic morphism of type BL and the consequence of that is if I have a set in N, either my set is here or in our N minus one, then it's thin at the point Y if and only if the inverse of that is thin at the same point of the fiber phi inverse Y. This is very useful in our proof that uh, we will back to this theorem one more time during the time. So that was all the ingredients that we need to present my new result, uh, our new result, uh, not necessarily mine. So let's start with uh, the definition that um, vertical line domain. This is the place we would like to give approximation for. So just take a look at this gray part here. So I have u prime subset of Rn minus one. Then I have two functions C and D, which are continuous function on U prime. And everything between the graph of C and D, we include everything between these two. So every U is all points, P prime and Y. P prime is in U prime. And Y is everything between the C of P prime and D of P prime. Everything in between uh, uh, we consider uh, as a vertical line domain. For the moment, Forget about these blue things and these green things here. Just take a look at this gray part. What, what is the first approximation theorem that we present? So the first one is if U, which is U prime C and D, be a vertical line domain and a prime subset of U prime and F sigma set. Again, if is N is two, we assume is of first category, if n is greater than two, we assume is a polar set. This, our assumption or hypothesis, but what is the consequence? The consequence is if I start with every uh, continuous function in U, then there is a harmonic function in U such that H approximate phi and the approximate gets better in the Carleman set if I vertically decreases to the value of C at X prime or vertically increase to the value of D at X prime. So in other words, so if I go through any of these lines, which is corresponds to my polar set, then the approximation gets better and better when I'm moving on these uh, lines here. Uh, I would like uh, to talk, please. Mohammed. So the uh, vertical line domains, basically you are ruling out uh, the turbulence, like the ocean waves, they, mm -hmm. they have turns, you see. Um, you, you know, we assume C and D are continuous function. Our results, I don't know about when we have discontinuity or- You see, have, I mean, you can imagine there is a, uh, turbulence on the ocean. I mean, they are the waves are very high, and uh, like uh, you see, they surf, bird surf on the on the on the ocean surface, mm -hmm. right? So, so the vertical domain is basically like uh, you have a very common ocean, right? Not along the uh, the the ocean in the bad weather. Right, right. That, that, that's a good analogy and it's a good phenomena mm -hmm. to visualize okay. the theorem. That's, that's, that's great. 
But for the moment, uh, we just know when C and D are continuous, and I think that can 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 uh, be be embedded in your model. Um, at the moment, I can't say something with hundred yeah, percent. Okay, yeah, uh, yeah, but there is yeah. a good analogy. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so how how many minutes left for me? Just uh, so uh, you have uh, ten slides. You have five minutes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So now uh, that's the approximation, and I would like to talk about the proof that we gave. So for, for the proof is is a little bit technical, but the, the sketch of that can be presented. Uh, easily. So the ultimate goal is to apply the Bagby uh, Gaussian theorem. If, if you remember the theorem that was characterizing the Carleman sets, and so long as I have a Carleman set, I can, I, can, uh, I can control over the approximation. Okay, so that's the ultimate goal. So I have to check three conditions. Uh, and uh, then, then the idea is just uh, you know, go through this shape. If you take a look at this, I start with FK prime, and then I consider a family of CK approximating C, a family of DK continuous functions approximating D, and then I will consider every vertical line between these two and every vertical line between these two when I am in FK. So that's the idea of how construct uh, the vertical lines. And the first condition can be checked by Fugli D theorem, as I mentioned uh, previously. The second condition, the long island condition, if you remember, is easy to check because uh, F does not have any hole and the interior is empty. And the last one is, again, it's a technical, but we can do it by exhaustion of our set by compact set. So the last step is just apply the Bagby Gaussian theorem. The only complaint or the only saddle point here is you may say that F is not close because if I consider this comp here, uh, F here is the union of contably many closed sets. So it may not be close as we see in the upper comp here. But the way we construct our set is decreasing vertical line. So if you have a decreasing vertical line, when you go to the boundary, then these form a local finite family of closed sets. So the union of them is definitely closed. Okay, so we, we would like to give a similar result. So again, uh, on SN, and uh, there's a polar coordinate that should not be confused with the polar sets. So this is just the usual polar coordinate that was used in the previous talk as well. And so the Fuglidi theorem says that when a set is polar in R n minus zero, and when it's polar in S n minus one. So the connection between these two is given by the Fugli D theorem and is pretty straightforward. Now I would like to talk about the second kind of domain. The second kind of domain is just take a look at this gray part here. Uh, so we start with the subset, open subset U prime of the unit sphere in Sn. And then we, like the uh, vertical line bundle, we consider two continuous function, R and R, and we consider everything between these two. And so this is my domain that I call the radial line domain, which has three components. And the approximation theorem says that if you are having a radial line domain, and if F prime is a subset of U prime, which is a sigma set of first category, if N is two and is polar, if N is greater than two, then again, every continuous function, there is a harmonic function that approximates it and the approximation tends to zero. If I go through this blue line here, okay? So that's the correspondence to my set uh, F prime. The, 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 the proof is almost the same with some uh, little changes. And the last approximation theorem, uh, the last two slides of my talk is about the strictly star-like domain. So we may let the one of the sides goes to infinity, and these are the strictly star-like domain. If we pick a point on that, if we join the point to the zero, everything in between should be in my set. And this set can be characterized by its projection on the unit sphere, which we call it U prime. And one continuous function that if I pick every point, the supremum of uh, the rate that 
I'm still in the point uh, uh, is called the R theta. That's the R theta here. And the last theorem is, it says that if U prime and R is a domain in Rn, a strictly star-like with respect to origin, and a prime be an F sigma subset of U prime, which is plot if N is greater than to our first category, if N is two, then every continuous function in U, there is a function H harmonic such that as I go to the boundary, the difference of these two tends to zero. So in other words, if you give me a, a continuous function here, I can give you a harmonic function that the difference of these two, when I am on this line, blue line, then the difference tends to zero. Okay, so that was pretty much uh, everything that I was gonna say. So uh, many thanks uh, for your attention and thanks again to the organizer. And here are a little bit of the references that interested people may take a look.